says I need a fault. So I tell it to make a fault. Okay, so let us <coughs> um, finish this uh, section about yes. social yeah. networks. Yeah. So, guys, guys, guys. Um, so, most of these concepts were developed for other purposes and are much older than social networks. As you will see today, they are um, related to marketing, above all, and then also epidemiology, uh, sociology in general, and uh, other fields, but they kind of got a real revival with the advent of this phenomenon of social networks. So, <coughs> if you want to do a marketing campaign, um, I mean, people that do marketing campaigns, in fact, study social networks, uh, and sometimes they might give free products to a few users of uh, uh, social networks that are, in some sense, central to the network, uh, right? So, what would the what would be then the right measurement of uh, centrality? Well, one way of uh, uh, doing it would be essentially to do the page rank uh, uh, algorithm, right? Uh, so. You would want people that are connected to uh, lots of other people that are themselves also well connected so that the penetration of the network is as large as possible. But it turns out there are other uh, more effective uh, uh, means. So this what I'm going to show you is really all for practical purposes. Uh, and it's uh, all heuristics, right? Because uh, it's really uh, impossible to study social networks in a, a theoretical manner that is sufficiently then faithful, applicable to the real network. So uh, one, and arguably not a very good uh, notion of centrality, would be just a, a large uh, degree of the node. Right, unfortunately, this doesn't see whether the, these lots of nodes that you are connected to, whether them, they themselves are well connected or not. So that's not a terribly good measurement. A uh, better <coughs> measurement uh, is uh, the reciprocal, so CI equals uh, n plus 1 divided by the sum of dij. So what are dij's and what is uh, uh, n? Um, uh, you uh, look, um, so we will assume that the network has been broken into uh, uh, connected components, right? So, and of course, then centrality applies to each component separately. So we will tacitly assume that uh, uh, you have a path from every node to every other uh, node of that component. So dij is the length of uh, the shortest path, or a shortest path, because there can be several of them of the same length. Right, and, uh, uh, oops, this is not uh, n plus 1, this is n minus 1. Uh, and uh, n is the number of uh, vertices. So notice what is this? Uh, this is actually a reciprocal of uh, the mean Uh, of the length of the shortest path, so centrality of a node i will be then a reciprocal of the mean of the 
a length of the shortest path from i to any other vertex j divided by how many other vertices there are, namely n minus 1. So this will be large, right, if this is small, which means that uh, uh, you can kind of hop from i to any other uh, vertex j with a reasonably small number of intermediate nodes. And of course, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is much better measurement than just uh, the vertex, but it turns out <coughs> it's not uh, uh, the optimal one. Of course, what does it mean optimal? Uh, that's uh, optimal in some heuristic sense. Uh, um, so uh, the third notion is uh, um, betweenness. Uh, uh, centrality. So what is between a centrality? Uh, well, let's denote by uh, n. Uh, 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 so what we are going to do, we are going to consider, we assume that we run an uh, all pair shortest path uh, algorithm, uh, and we consider shortest paths from between any two points uh, um, say S and T, and uh, uh, let N sub ST super I be the number of uh, shortest paths uh, between S and T, uh, to which uh, vertex VI uh, belongs. Right, so there might be many shortest paths from S and T. And say here is your vertex VI. Uh, and if there are three shortest spots, uh, uh, VI might belong to the two of them. Right? And let's denote by GST the total number of shortest spots between S and T. Right? And then the notion of centrality, this between us notion of centrality, V uh, I, is defined as a sum over all possible vertices in the graph. And then to avoid double counting, we assume that, uh, um, that the vertices are ordered. Right, with any ordering whatsoever. So this is just to avoid, this is essentially the sum over, maybe I should just, instead of this, this is how they define it in the textbook. Uh, but it would be, yeah, well, it's just to avoid double counting of uh, uh, n i s t over g s t. So this is simply sum over all S and T uh, of uh, N I all pairs of S T uh, N uh, N I S T over G uh, S T. So you simply count on what fraction of the total number of shortest paths between S and T, uh, num uh, your vertex sits in, and that's taken um, this ratio, some of these ratios over all 
SMT <coughs> belonging to G uh, gives you the notion of centrality. So why uh, such a kind of convoluted definition? Well, if you uh, consider just as an example a graph that looks like this, Somehow the best connected in the in the graph. The takes one. Exactly. So it would be one and three, uh, right? Because this link is extremely important because it uh, connects these two clusters, right? Now, if you use the second definition, first obviously outgoing vertex is totally non-discriminating here. It would give seven, three, one two, four, uh, the same uh, centrality, right? Uh, namely, three, the degree is three for all of them. Um, and uh, 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 you can compute that uh, C uh, of uh, one, which would be this uh, uh, average length of shortest path, uh, paths to all other vertices, it turns out to be 0 0.63. And if you compute C2, uh, it's uh, 0 0.5. So, um, oops, this is C, 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 uh, B, if I am C1, ah, uh, C1 and C2. So, uh, one has a higher coefficient of centrality, but only barely. On the other hand, for the same graph, uh, you can <coughs> verify you apply this formula as a homework. It turns out that B1, uh, or let me be consistent, B sub 1. So between the centrality is 12, and between the centrality of 2, is only 2.5. And this, you can see, uh, reflects much better our intuition that one is more central to uh, this graph than two. So in applications, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this measurement is preferred. Uh, of course, a bit uh, the price to be paid, namely, you have to run this dynamic programming algorithm that we saw in 3, 1, 2, 1 to compute all pairs, uh, uh, shortest paths, right? Well, um, but this is how, so, so what is, you know, this guy would get a free iPhone to recommend it to everyone else. This is the idea. So, or if you want to spread a rumor, right, this guy is the best guy for you to do the job. So this kind of analysis of the link structure of social networks are extremely popular today, especially, you know, for marketing purposes and uh, our companies employ people to uh, do this, uh, what is called data analytics, right, including mining of uh, uh, social networks, right? Uh, one can also define um, the notion of importance of an edge, right? Uh, what would be, what do you think, which edge here should have the highest weight in terms of its importance? Uh, one, three. 
three one exactly one three right and lo and behold this notion in betweenness uh, between the centrality of uh, can be readily extended to uh, edges you would have uh, Bij to be sum over st in G of nij st divided by G st where nij st is the number of shortest uh, parts between uh, S and G, so which include link or edge uh, uh, I uh, J. Right. So this is a analogous and it turns out in practice very useful measurement for uh, importance of uh, of links. Okay. So obviously here uh, the idea is uh, uh, to leverage the topological structure of the network. Uh, to mine information about um, uh, what are important uh, members of the network or what are the important connections. So uh, an example of uh, when the edge, so what can you think, when, uh, what would be one possible uh, application, what would edge between S and T <coughs> Sign, uh, signify in, for example, if you consider Twitter accounts. What, if you want to spread the rumor, what edges would be important? The ones that lots of outgoing. But it would be in Twitter, right? What do people do besides? Uh, tell, uh, telling the rest of the world the greatest uh, truth that they came up with, uh, they also do what? Retweet. Retweet, exactly. So if you are Donald Trump and you want to tweet more, more nonsense than he already has tweeted, uh, uh, then you would look uh, uh, at the links uh, uh, between himself and people who regularly retweet him, right? Um, so, and as I say, uh, uh, the moment humans invent something, uh, the next day they start abusing it, right? So you can do this to spread fake news, which is a big thing nowadays. Um, and, uh, uh, or you know, if you want to plant uh, uh, some virus to someone's computer with the hope that it will spread all over the network. These are the guys uh, that you should target. Okay, so uh, the next thing that we want to talk about is uh, uh, epidemiology, right? Spreading diseases. Uh, now, of course, we are not interested in uh, Spreading diseases, but what do you think? What are we interested in? Predicting the spread. Hmm? Predicting it. Predicting disease, that's you, you have pure soul. <laughs> you would like to predict the spread of disease. What spread are people interested in? Biological weapons. Biological weapons or for computer scientists? Virus. Virus and malware, of course. That's the disease that uh, uh, people are interested in, uh, and uh, um, in fact, so even though just for the political correctness, this is all formulated for real uh, diseases, uh, what 
we are interested in, uh, if you are interested in computer security, is in fact the spread of uh, uh, viruses, trojans, and other nice things that uh, people put out there. So uh, there are several models. Uh, so models of uh, infection spreading. And of course, all these models were done really for uh, um, for real diseases uh, uh, rather early on, probably in the uh, 50s and 60s. Uh, but uh, today we are interested in them for, of course, computer security purposes. Uh, uh, so the first <coughs> model is called the SI model. Uh, and in SI model, you have, you partition the population into those that are susceptible to infection and those that are already infected. Uh, say you start monitoring, you discover an outbreak of a disease and you want to see how disease will spread, how quickly the number of infected people will increase, right? And uh, this is governed, uh, this is modeled by a simple differential equation that says that the derivative of uh, the num total number of infections, right, is equal some constants constant beta times uh, how many susceptible people there are at given moment times how many infected people there are with, uh, of course, underlying assumption that ST plus IT is always kept constant equal to the size of total population N. Sometimes this is normalized so instead of number of susceptible and number of infected, uh, you consider the fraction infected, uh, 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 fraction, uh, the fraction of infected population. But it doesn't make a difference. This is kind of easier. So this is equal to then beta times uh, m minus i of t, because this is s, right, times i of t. So the function will be, it's non-linear equation, it will be, i of t will be uh, a quadratic here. Now what do you think, why do we, what's the meaning of these beta times s of t times i of t? Why do we multiply s of t by i of t? It's a small group of people. Sorry? It's a small group of people, so like we assume everybody can see each other. Mm -hmm. So then SI, very good, then SI times... Uh, uh, so number uh, of pairs. Exactly, number of pairs. So this is S of T times I of T is equal to the number of pairs of uh, uh, one infected and one susceptible. Right? And beta is the likelihood that uh, if an infected person meets a susceptible, a, a healthy person but susceptible people, person, this is the probability that the, the infection from the infected person will jump to, uh, to the susceptible person. So that's a very logical uh, model, right? But as you <coughs> mentioned, here the assumption is uh, that everyone interacts with everyone else. And this is true for small communities. Uh, now, later we will see what, how things change uh, if we have, say, uh, all, all small local communities, but that they which inter interact with each other and in this way allow uh, the disease to spread from one community 
to another community, right? So, uh, right, so this simply says uh, the rate of increase of uh, uh, infected people is proportional to the probability of passing the disease from an infected to the susceptible person times total number of pairs so that one person is infected and the other is susceptible. Okay, but this is not a realistic model because eventually uh, the sufficient number of five, everyone will be infected, right? So the model doesn't take into account recovery or God forbid death, right? Uh, so this can be tweaked into SIS uh, model in which uh, the certain fraction of infected people recovers and becomes, and we assume in this model that the, uh, you don't get resistance, <coughs> right? So uh, here, susceptible people are those that do not have antivirus software on their computer, so they get a virus, and uh, after managing to clean up the virus, then they still don't buy an antivirus uh, uh, software, right? So what would be the, uh, the equation there? Well, the equation is that the derivative of the spread of infection is again beta times <coughs> S of T times I of T. So this is the new coming infected people, but minus uh, gamma times I of T, namely the fraction of infected people that uh, recovers, uh, right? And again, uh, the, uh, the assumption is that, of course, S of T plus I of T is equal M, which is the total size of the population. Now, the first model that I mentioned, but forgot to put it, this differential equation is sufficiently simple to be solvable explicitly, and the solution looks like this. I of t is equal to I of 0 times e to the power beta t divided by uh, S of 0 plus I of 0 e to the beta t. And uh, it has kind of uh, logistic, uh, it it's, it's increases up to the rate of infection becoming, uh, when the rate of infection is maximal, and then tapers off as a larger and larger uh, population gets infected. Here, the solution is also possible to do explicitly. Uh, and uh, we have that this is equal to 1 over gamma divided by beta times uh, C e to the beta minus gamma uh, times T. And here is 1 plus C uh, times E to the beta minus gamma times uh, T, where C is a constant that depends on initial conditions. Right? So, but um, again, this doesn't uh, include, uh, so it includes a recovery, but uh, uh, it doesn't include people who actually become immune, uh, which is uh, once you get hit by a, by a virus, then uh, you get your lesson, someone encrypts your hard drive and asks you for a hundred bucks to decrypt it, uh, and that makes you uh, buy uh, an antivirus software. Um, so, uh, 
So the next model is SIR model, in which we have uh, three groups of population. We have susceptible, we have those that recover and are immune, and we have, uh, uh, of course, infected guys here. What e would be the differential equation? Let's try to do it. Uh, so how does the infection uh, progress? Uh, first, we always have uh, new coming infected people, which is beta times uh, S of T times I of T. But then you have minus gamma times infected people, uh, and these are those that will recover. So then uh, the derivative of recovered people is, of course, equal gamma times I of t. Right, so it's very similar to one above, but except that uh, instead of these guys, instead of becoming newly susceptible people, they become resistant. And of course, underlying assumption always is that uh, I of t plus S of t plus R of t is equal to M. <coughs> so uh, this would be uh, assuming, say these are all computers on the same network, everyone can talk to each other. Uh, some of them have antivirus software, uh, some of them not. Uh, then uh, um, this, this would be the differential equation uh, that they will satisfy. But guess, even though this looks almost the same as this, uh, unfortunately, this one doesn't have a closed form solution in elementary functions. So the only way to solve it is numerically solving it, but that's a piece of cake for present-day software. Uh, it can solve rather complicated equations uh, uh, extraordinarily efficiently, right? So here, uh, you can now further refine this. Maybe some of the guys uh, will buy antivirus software, some will not. So you can have a uh, Model. So here it goes like this, from susceptible, someone becomes infectious and then recovers, right? But you can also consider uh, from susceptible, you become infectious and then some of them didn't learn the lesson and become, after removing the virus, you still become susceptible and uh, one fraction becomes uh, resistant, or in case of uh, illnesses, it requires uh, immunity, right? It, uh, it acquires immunity. So, what would be the differential <coughs> equation? Uh, now we will have two gammas. Uh, so, I of t, I prime of t would be equal to beta of S of t times I of t minus gamma 1 plus gamma 2 i of t and then you will have uh, r prime of t equals uh, uh, gamma say gamma 1 times i of t but you also have s prime of t equals minus beta uh, s of t times i of t, right? Uh, but plus uh, gamma 2 i of t, right? This is the, so some fraction of susceptible becomes infected, so uh, you have to subtract from s newly infected people, but then you add those that, uh, uh, so here uh, gamma 1 is uh, recovery rate with immunity uh, 
and gamma 2 is uh, recovery uh, without uh, immunity. So this was all done uh, way before the uh, spread of computer viruses, right? It was done for the real epidemiological studies. Now, these constants are determined from statistical data from following past infections, right? And uh, they are actually, well, pretty, uh, pretty accurately known for all of the major diseases. Um, and, of course, uh, these kind of differential equations are used when the governments decide uh, how aggressive they should uh, uh, do uh, vaccination. Uh, you, 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 it's impossible to vaccinate the entire population, but uh, you, um, uh, you choose the fraction of people that you will uh, uh, vaccinate so to significantly uh, slow down um, the, the spread of disease and of course in the early stage of infection it's easy to see that all these equations produce uh, exponential growth right and so the, uh, the vaccination rate is uh, uh, used uh, to cover off uh, the rate of increase uh, okay yeah. So, let us see. So now, notice this all assumes that this is applicable, say, to a population that lives in a city, right, in a uh, relatively stationary kind of environment, meaning uh, with few people going out and few people coming in. Right, so and a relatively small community in which uh, every, uh, in which you are, of course, you don't have to be to interact with every other individual <coughs> because these beta can encode a product of the coefficient how likely it is to spread versus uh, how many pairs uh, are reasonable to assume, right? You, this takes into account all possible pairs, but uh, uh, you can all 